going to run through writing section. As you can see here on the screen, I've listed some sample prompts from task two. That's right, I have put task two first. Why? Because task two is worth more points. You want to focus your energy, your concentration on task two. When you prepare and you're writing sample essays, that is when you can count so you can eyeball and see, okay, if I write, you know, my normal handwriting, it fills one, maybe two pages. You should not be counting your words in the exam because that's a waste of time. So task two is always a prompt that has to do with your opinion about a topic. So you can find many of these prompts online to help you get in the habit of thinking through your opinion and being able to express your opinion. Really want to pay attention to what is this question asking? No, it's not starting to write immediately. You have to read the question, understand what it is you are answering, write down a few notes, and then you begin. So before you start your essay, it's helpful to think of your outline. And the introduction is the place in which you are restating the question in your own words. And then the body is where you talk about your main points. So remember, each paragraph is like a jar and you want to keep one kind of main idea, one topic in each paragraph, because if you put too many ideas in a paragraph, it's like going into Amma's kitchen and you're putting all the uh, kursani and the noon and everything into one jar. So same thing here with writing. You want to keep your ideas partitioned out and you do that through paragraphs. When you have your outline, it becomes easier for you to stay on track, stay focused, and just write what you've already thought through. If you start writing without your outline, your ideas are going to be all over the place. The essay is not going to be as strong and you're not going to get as high of a score. I've listed a basic outline structure. So the introduction in which you paraphrase the question, the body in which you focus on your main points, and then final paragraph is your conclusion. And the conclusion is your summary. The last paragraph should not include any new ideas. If you have a new idea in that final paragraph, it means that you messed up somehow. You you didn't actually write the outline. You didn't think through what you need to say. Paraphrasing is using your own words. So there are certain terms and words that will be listed in the actual question. And you want to see, how can I restate this? Consumer spending on products. What's another way that you can say this? And this is where your vocabulary practice and your vocabulary studying really helps you because you can think, okay, spending also means what? Well, money and consumer spending on products. How else can I say products? Items. So I could say, okay, money people spend buying items. Consumption of pasta. What does consumption mean? And so another way that we could say it, amount of pasta eaten. Changes in cost of home rentals. And then you have the years. So, okay, 10 years is what? It's a decade. So this is all paraphrasing. So when you're starting off in your introduction paragraph, you are paraphrasing, restating the question in your own words. You have written your essay. You feel good about it. You're just glad to be done with this exam. Are you finished? No. There's another step, and this is the last step, one that you cannot forget, because when you do this, you will improve your score. When you write, there will be mistakes. So whether it's a spelling mistake, you've repeated a word, forgot a comma, you check and you find those, you reread your essay before you turn it in. For task two, this whole process, outlining what you're going to say, writing the actual essay, checking it and rereading it before you're finished, this should take 40 minutes minutes, then you look at task one. So task one in IELTS presents some sort of graph or picture or chart, and you have to figure out what's going on. The example that I like to give is if you are going to a museum, they say, sorry, no pictures. If you come back home and your parents are asking you, what'd you see? How was it? You have to be able to describe in words something that you saw visually. In task one, you're simply describing the information that you see. You're not adding anything. You're not including extra information. You're not inserting your opinion, 
you're just describing the chart or the image that you're provided. Things that you must focus on on task one are the major changes and trends. In classes, I like to say it's the slopes. So incline, decreases, or plateaus, flat, no change. We use a range of writing. So that means different verbs, adjectives, adverbs to describe the patterns that you're seeing. And then of course, verb tense is important because you're describing a chart but the chart sometimes refers to a period of time. Be very careful about using the right verb tense when you're going through and explaining task one items. When you're looking at a chart or a graph, the title is important. The labels on the X, Y axis, those are important. The key that tells you what does everything mean, that's important. The trends are important. So those are the details that must be included in your essay. Again, you are not adding anything. You're not speculating why something has happened. Your opinion is only in task two. In task one, you're just describing what the chart is, what it shows to a viewer. How can you check if your essay is good? You read your essay to someone else who does not see the chart and you ask them what they imagine. Can they understand the chart or the image that you see without them seeing the chart themselves? Focus on what matters. What matters is the actual question. But oftentimes people sit down and they freak out and they start thinking about, I got to get a seven. If I don't, then I have to retake it. You're sitting down, you're focused focusing on the essay, the task at hand, and you're doing your best on what the question is presenting you with. Now, in order to do that, your writing cannot be repetitive. Use complex sentence structures, use different words, use examples, make it interesting for the reader to read. And obviously, if you're taking the handwritten test, if the examiner cannot read your handwriting, they can't mark it. So your handwriting has to be clear. And again, verb tenses. So this is the tricky part for most English language learners when to use which verb tense and how. When you are preparing for any test, you have to understand what is the rubric. So how are they grading you? Do you understand the question and how well are you replying to the questions? So are you doing what is being asked and how well are you doing that? So sometimes a question will say, discuss both of these views and give your opinion. So when a question says discuss both of the views, you do have to take time to carve out separate paragraphs to discuss both sides, talk about both sides, and then give your opinion at the end. If you only give a little bit of talking about the one side and you forget to do the other side and go right into your opinion, you are not doing what the question has asked you to. So your score is not going to be as high. The other ways that you can boost Booster score is thinking about what are the words that you're using. Vocabulary studying is important. We call this a lexical resource. So this is how many words do you have in your vocabulary toolbox and are you using them correctly? It doesn't make sense to throw out a bunch of fancy words in the wrong place if you don't understand what they actually mean. The other thing is, does your writing flow? Is it easy to read? So we call this cohesion. Do the words and phrases fit together or does it feel blocky? Are there transitional words used? Furthermore and additionally and however and besides, and then obviously accuracy. This is the name of the game. Are you doing it right? You can think that your grammar is great. Is it really? And that's what the grader will be looking for. So you can practice at home. You are going to walk through the steps that we just discussed here. So you're taking 40 minutes to read the prompt, understand what it's asking, then make notes, create your outlines. Some people believe achievement comes from hard work. Others think success is related to luck. Which view do you agree with and why? Provide relevant details and examples to support your opinion. What are the other words that you can use for achievement? How else can you say success or luck? You can use thesaurus.com. Which view do you agree with and why? So you're given two options here. Where does success come from? Working hard or you just get lucky? It's chance. And then think what kinds of details or examples do you have from your own knowledge, your own experience, your own readings that can help you reinforce the point that you are trying to make. Maybe you know of an entrepreneur who's worked really, 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 really hard. Maybe Maybe you do know someone who's just kind of 
you know, like a how a person, but got lucky. What is your viewpoint? And then you're making your outline and using details and examples that can back that up. Remember, practice, not perfect. Perfection is not going to happen, but you can improve. One of the best things that you can do today to boost your writing score is pick up a book and start reading. Because when you start reading, you'll start recognizing grammatical patterns. You'll look and find words that are unfamiliar to you. And you keep a journal. Write down any word that is new or unfamiliar, learn the meaning. I don't know if you guys do meditation, but when you're meditating, all of these ideas come into your head and you're supposed to just kind of observe it and let it go. Same thing with writing. Lots of things can come up. Outline will keep you focused and grounded on what you are communicating. Mm -hmm.